Captain's Log, Supplemental. Today we experienced a near catastrophic event. Chief Engineer DeBole was performing routine maintenance on the warp core when all hell broke loose. The lift to the second level of engineering malfunctioned, hurtling upward at incredible speed. Upon reaching the second level, the lift platform continued upon its trajectory, freeing itself from the lift shaft, ricocheting off the bulkhead, and then the warp core manifold where it left a sizable rupture. Luckily, the chief engineer acted quickly and was able to seal the rupture before we had to eject the entire warp core. After some questioning of his team, Chief Engineer DeBole discovered that our new transfer from the USS Resilience, Crewman Bernicke, had made some modifications to the lift after lamenting that it was too slow and that he, and I quote, looked lame, slowly ascending to the upper level. The entire engineering team has been given extra maintenance shifts to ensure that no more modifications have slipped our notice. When I inquired about Bernicke's service record on his previous ship, the only response I received from Captain Hollings of the Resilience were the words, Finally got you back. It seems that someone has held on to a grudge since our Academy days. Welcome to this week's episode of Captain's Log Supplemental. My name is Rob. I'm joined by Stanford. Hey there. And Chris. Good evening. All right. On uh, this week's Captain's Log Supplemental, we'll be diving through episode four, Strange New World, which uh, I think the consensus might be that doesn't quite live up to the hype of the new show, but... Uh, just just maybe. Just... <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> just dive right in here so uh, this episode kicks off with a lesson on termites um, we come across the entomologist studying a book on alien termites oh you mean uh, mealtime for randos yep exactly uh, eating some I guess really bland Vulcan soup or something mm. I don't know really what that was um, when, surprise, surprise, they realize they've deviated from their flight plan and wound up in orbit around the planet. Um, Archer decides that the planet looks unclaimed, so Giddy Archer decides to set down and explore. Uh, T'Pol brings up the entirely reasonable protocols that should be observed, like getting probes down to the surface to get a sense of safety and biocompatibility of the planet, which My immediately... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, my notes here just say, once again, T'Pol seems very reasonable. Right. Yeah, totally uh, reasonable. Uh, meanwhile, the entire bridge crew laughs at her like a bunch of assholes. Yeah. So it's not even that. it's not even laughing, though, because Giddy Archer turns into pre-Rage Archer, mm. who then quickly resorts to the defense mechanism of patronizing Archer. And then punches down to stick it to one of his own subordinates. Sure. I, the other thing that I, I caught here that I thought was interesting is that we we learn where the, the term M-class planet comes from. Minshara class. The yeah, M-class I, for Minshara. Yeah, I heard that. Huh. And it was one of those things where my, my brain pinged because I'm like... Mm, I'm pretty sure M class has been used way before this, but I can't like, I used to play a game called Anacreon and it had class class, like planet classes, but did, did, did the original series use the term M class? It probably did. Rob would probably know that better. Rob. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't remember. All right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go, I'm a go uh, memory alpha this. You go ahead. All right. So, uh, cue some faith of the heart. We, we then cut to the uh, landing crew setting down on the planet, completely just throwing aside any concerns that Paul might have had about the situation. Uh, landing crew brings the dog with them, because of course they do. Oh, by the way, on, on this landing, what is up with the dumb baseball caps? What was that about? Oh, uh, I like the is baseball that like a Navy thing? caps. It, it is actually, um, uh, it, it is kind of a Navy thing. It's funny because it reminded okay. me um, in, in a weird way of like Sequest, which is like that old Roy Scheider oh, show. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. 
But like where they, but like whenever they were off the boat, they had their fucking baseball caps on. Like, oh no, I like I like the baseball caps. So like I, I saw it and immediately thought of Periscope down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we don't see them ever again in the entire series. Oh, that's a shame. Um, the one thing I was surprised to see was the camera the trip had. Mm. Photo up time. Um, yeah, like it's just it's weird to me because things like um, um, communicator badges, like the the idea of cell phone technology and personal mm. communication, is like something that stemmed from Star Trek lore. And like I don't understand why the weirdly analog camera exists. I, I was just expecting something a little more futury, I guess. Well, I mean, well, you're, keep you're, in mind, this is what, 2001, 2002? One, like, you're two, at the yeah. peak of digital cameras, like, ubiquity, right? Right oh, before. That's true. Because, yeah. like, phone cameras blew back then. They were like the crappy little flip phone cameras. But mm-hmm. digital cameras were becoming, like, so fucking cheap that you could pick one up. Like, you'd get them at birthday parties and shit around this time. Like, yeah. like little even, ones even that could hold. Yeah. Even through like 2008 or so, digital cameras were still pretty popular. And that's before like the, the phone cameras has gotten very good. Yeah. So I guess I keep forgetting how old the show is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it is it is funny that the, you know, Star Trek from the 60s predicted like these wireless communication devices, which were far ahead of their time. But then like yeah. this show in 2001 like predicted the same technology that we actually had at the time. It didn't think of anything <laughs> newer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Archer skips out on the scheduled rendezvous and gets a charting from Topol. Hold on. Hold on. You missed the best part. Exploration oh, montage. No, oh, God. that, that, yeah, there was, I forgot about that. Featuring swimming <laughs> penises. And then the hills are alive with the sound of music. I, I was also surprised that they brought the fucking dog. Like, that yeah. seems like a bad idea. Well, um, there's this think is about an episode it. full of bad ideas. By the way, yes. just so that we, uh, we, we, we are fully aware, um, like the random crew deciding to camp while the other staff are doing real important work right. is totally <laughs> valid military. Like, that happens all the fucking time. <laughs> like, that's a real thing. I, I did appreciate Archer telling Trip to pitch his tent. Mm. <laughs> so uh after sundown we get some good old-fashioned sci-fi campfire ghost story from travis <laughs> which Space uh ghost stories yeah uh doesn't seem to impress to paul so much uh cutler our friendly entomologist um picks out the sun in the sky of stars it, it was actually I, I guess i didn't really think about it until like this very point but they probably really easily can track where our sun is in the constellations at night. And that's that's pretty cool to think about. Mm. Like, you know, you can you can see home even though you're, you know, millions of miles away, I guess. Um, Just as a quick recap, Class M was apparently used first in the... Uh, the episode of the original series called The Cage, but Star Trek invented the term in that episode back in the 60s. Yeah. Um, Minshara. I think that's the episode of Pike. Um, that doesn't sound wrong. The problem is my brain calls that one The Menagerie, which I think may have been the original pilot title of it, but I think The mm-hmm. Cage was the secondary title. Um, but... Uh, I guess the word Minshara was like later retconned to be the reason it's a class yeah. M planet. Cause at the time they're just yeah. like, I don't know, call it a fucking class M M for mm, earth. earth. <laughs> M for my, this is a nice planet to land on <laughs> M for we don't have mo money for mo types of planets to film on. Oh gosh. Oh, God. Um, that's that's some that's some original series cooking right there. You hell yeah, that's why the transporters yep. exist, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, a little after the campfire story, fireflies bail on everybody, and uh, wind picks up into a storm that then sets upon our campers. It, True. Did the Enterprise not warn them about the storm? You would like, think, like. like it's one of those things that should have been very, very obvious from orbit. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right. I don't I, understand how it could have surprised them. Sure, and I can appreciate and I can appreciate that they don't know the climate and the weather patterns. But like, hey, there's a storm over there. It's pretty close to where our dudes are. Seems like a pretty straightforward policy. Sure, right. So, uh, in the midst of the wind kicking up, there's um, a weird comparison to a hurricane. Like, can you actually camp out in a hurricane? Or was I mean, I just wouldn't being... recommend it. Like, it depends on what kind of I, tent you have, but generally it is not recommended. Mostly because you don't want shit falling right? on you. Yeah. Well, not just that. Like the the floor of the tent isn't flat against the ground. Like if the wind picks it up, you now have a sail that you're stuck inside of. Yeah, but it's future laser tent, so it might be okay. Oh, laser sure, tent. Sure. Well, uh, laser tent doesn't prevent the alien scorpion from <laughs> hiding the inside way, of Trip's like, sleeping bag. I'm like 90% sure that's the alien from the Next Generation episode that like goes through your mouth and takes over your body. It looked exactly like it to me. The, though, hmm. uh, huh. You, okay. You remember the one where it like would like took over like a bunch of the, the com- like the, the commanders of Starfleet and they had a little like spine sticking out the back of their neck. That's how they could tell. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember the precise graphics used. It did not oh, look it, unsimilar to the one used in um, by Khan in the second Star Trek movie. Khan. It looked like a That's weird ass earwig. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, oh, wait, do we place. think that was the scorpion real? No. Okay. Trip was just hallucinating it, that. It's, it's my opinion that, that they, they had, that, that was the beginning of their. Sure. Okay hallucinations oh uh, you know he does suggest shooting hallucinations a lot in this episode <laughs> i, I so i'm gonna that i'm gonna be true i'm gonna go ahead and submit that out of all of the star trek we've seen so far um trips acting about that fucking scorpion is the most real acting i have seen <laughs> that man that man it, has it was. that man sold that shit it was pretty good um so trip in desperation, suggests to T'Pol that they head to the cave network that they had found locally, conveniently, earlier on during their uh, their expedition across the countryside. The way team makes their way to the caves and realizes when they get there that they forgot the food packs, which, uh, how is that the one thing you forget? Travis Look, volunteers to go grab them. This team... They're not a bunch of winners on the first go around. Let's just say that. No, <laughs> it's a crack crack I, squad here. Oh god, it, it feels like they make all of the first mistakes on Starfleet's checklist of first mistakes to make. Got somebody's got to make them. That's how the rule book got written. They just they just went through the Enterprise logs and said that everything they did was not allowed. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just it's wild. So uh, Travis runs to go and grab the food packs they left behind. And while he's out, sees some humanoid figures wandering off in the storm. He mistakes them for, I think, Trip. Um, gets back, starts warning everybody that there might be strangers out and about after he's told that no one else was actually out there. Stranger and then danger. Ethan starts hearing voices from deep in the cave and then decides to book it off into the night, into the storm, like you do. Sure. Um, Trip and Travis go to collect him while T'Pol goes to investigate the back of the cave. So this is the point where Trip gets a better look at what he thinks are their new neighbors. Uh, he spots one of them morphing out of a rock, like they're using some sort of camouflage. Would you say he was tripping balls? I I would. I, I would say that, yes. Okay. I, I mean, I was having trouble telling what was real at this point because the computer-generated graphics were just unbelievable. <laughs> Do you remember Chuck's quest? Super great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 This the, is like the Doom a, mod. Yeah. This is like Chuck's quest level CGI at this point. <laughs> yeah, early early two thousands. So uh, Travis mentions that the camouflage might be why they don't show up in the scanners. But if that's true, either I don't know how camouflage works, or the Enterprise and the crew are equipped with the universe's worst scanners. <laughs> I, I think he said that because they were he was coming out of the rock that their quote unquote camouflage was that they were literally inside the rock. And that's why this game. Oh, like they were rock picky. people. 
Yeah, yeah, or or in some way, shape, or form, phasing into the rock or whatever. Like that. That is what okay. I gathered was his point. Okay. Because later, uh, that because makes later, a more sense. To Paul says like, I scanned all the rocks. It's just limestone. What do you? What do you? There's no creatures here. Right. Do, do you think the rock person's name was Rock Sam? I think it was Pierre. <laughs> French. Okay. <laughs> So uh, entomologist Cutler claims to see T'Pol talking to one of these new life forms. But uh, T'Pol won't admit it when she's confronted. Ethan tells Archer to F off after he tries to hail them, after blatantly ignoring his crew's recommendations not to fly into the gale force winds. And in the process, busts a thruster off the lander and has to bail on the rescue operation. They do love scraping paint off those shuttle pods. They really do. Um, Trip loses faith in T'Pol, throws a little mutiny, and uh, Archer decides to try to beam Ethan up using the transporter. They find out Ethan has some sort of foreign contaminants because the local flora has started infecting him from the looks of it. It was really creepy. Um, Oh, he got beamed up with a bunch of rocks and shit that were just kind of in the air around him, too. By the way, why like in his skin? Why just in his skin? Why wouldn't it be like... In the rest of him. I don't know. Like, was it supposed to be that the wind had slammed it in, or was it that the planet was infecting him? No, I no, think the, no. the idea was that, that they were getting interference from the storm, I guess, with yeah. like, too much debris around him. And so the, oh. the teleporter, like, rephased him with the rocks and twigs. Did and its best. In. Okay. Yeah. I, I misunderstood that. Oh, that sounds awful. So... I, I don't know how teleporters work, but if I had to provide a benefit of the doubt, best guess answer as to why it was only in his skin, I assume there's some kind of AI reconstructing these people and maybe there's like some sort of understanding as to where his quote unquote edges are. And so yeah. that's where it's having trouble discerning between him and other objects. And so it just started beaming everything together and therefore so you're it would he be. Wasn't, he yeah, wasn't the, edgy enough. The computer didn't edge him properly, right? Because, <laughs> like, because, like, so in the best like modern example I can think of is if you, if you're using the uh, like the, the 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 smart select in Photoshop or whatever, like the interior of your image is going to look fine, even if the outside looks all shitty because you have it set wrong or because it's too busy or sure. whatever. Transporters don't color inside the lines. Is that what we're saying? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so at this point, Trip completely loses it and goes full anti-Vulcan conspiracy theorist on to Paul. Uh, we then cut back to Dr. Flox, who discovers Ethan's hysteria was due to some psychoactive compounds found in his blood from the planet. And uh, Archer then has to talk Trip down from shooting to Paul in cold blood. And sure. This is the point in my notes where I've got Travis starts tripping balls. I really missed that joke with Trip earlier, Chris. Thank you for that. I'm telling you, man. Yep. So uh, Trip and Paul wind up in a standoff where it is Flux figures out that the compound is emitting stray neutrons that are frying Ethan from the inside. Which, ow. Sure. Uh, Paul is worried that Trip is going to kill her and passes that along by speaking Vulcan to Hoshi? So, hold on a sec. Okay. So, when Flox is going over the... After they go back to Ethan and he's like, Oh, he might be dying. Archer gets very cranky about Flox for some reason. When, yeah. if we're being honest here, it's his dumbass decisions that have led to the bad consequences that have happened. Oh, yeah. If we've learned one thing so far in the series, it's that Archer's really good at projection. Hmm. Um, so he really is, so, he is, he is the American captain for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like given this whole situation, I don't understand why at this point with everything happening and, you know, given, you know, some minor uh, issues with getting Ethan on board, why didn't they just use the teleporter to get the rest of them off the planet? Shut up. That's why. <laughs> because plot That's reasons. Right transporter not teleporter <laughs> this is the same reason the transporter isn't used to solve virtually all problems in star trek is you know we got to have a show 
Sure. That's good. It, it could solve a lot of problems. Strange New Worlds was like, yeah, we could just solve anything with a fucking transporter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is B medicine right into his body. So uh, this is the point where Archer decides to go full on crazy to fight the crazy and makes up a story about how this was really a top secret mission given to him by Starfleet to make first contact with rock people. Um, I, I want to be very clear with my limited knowledge of psychology. I, I don't I don't think that's going to work like. A delusion is a delusion. Playing into the delusion is just going to make the person make up something crazier. That's what a delusion is. Right? Yeah, but at the same time, with like, with Alzheimer's patients, I mean, dementia clearly is not the same sort of psychological phenomenon. But the one thing that you're told when you're taking care of an Alzheimer's patient is, uh, it's not to play along with it, but... You're not supposed to tell them that they're wrong because it causes distress for them. Sure, but like, that's also so that you can make sure that they get back and eat applesauce properly, not so that they don't shoot a crewmate in the face. Also true. <laughs> Both valid points. So, uh, in the midst of this, Archer does con- uh, convince Trip to put the gun down, uh, at which point DePaul just straight up stuns Trip and, uh, gives everybody their inoculations. I feel like inoculation was the wrong term for the show to use here. Like this isn't like a virus. It's a, it's a toxin for sure. Antipsychotics. Maybe. I don't know. Well, it's not a vaccine. Doesn't inoculation just mean a medicine that prevents something? I was like, that would be a prophylactic. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the, the proper terminology is there. Um, so but, uh, she administers a nice little nerve pinch to Travis to keep him from waking up and causing problems. I yeah. feel like she could have yeah. done that a lot earlier to a lot more of them pretty much right away. Yeah. Yeah. So that pretty much wraps up the end of the episode. Everything else closes out conveniently. I, I get the sense that this is kind of uh, foreshadowing for more of these problems to come. I think that's the general gist I'm getting is that Archer going to Archer. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what the point of this episode was because nothing was. It was all very uninteresting. I think I agree. I think the point of the episode was to demonstrate the um, ignorance and overconfidence of of the Hunams. Um, but they've been doing that all along. Yeah. Like, why, why need, like... Look, they really wanted to drive the point home, okay? Because, like, it, it, this episode felt like when halfway through a season or whatever, they run out of writing budget. And so they're just like, well, we'll just we'll just have a quick, Filler. easy episode. And it's like, this is episode fucking four of your, of your brand new show. And you've got a one where we kind of see a cave and everyone gets sweaty. And not in a good way. Yeah, I mean, certainly I, no no new uh, themes for this episode, but yeah. I would feel better if there was some sort of lesson learned after each of these events, mm. or if Archer faced any repercussions for everything that happens. Like, he takes zero responsibility all of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. So why'd you guys fuck up this thing that I told you <laughs> to do all of? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we uh, we gotta take a break, and then we will we will be back. All right, welcome back, everybody. So. For today's deep dive, we're going to take a look at the importance of protocols. And uh, I think this is the perfect episode to demonstrate why they're important to have. I feel like I'm in second grade right now. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like the rubric. Uh, this is why we have rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I took the gum off the teacher's desk. Everyone loses the pizza party. Exactly. So like I I get that I get that the, this is like the first time that humans are really setting out into deep space 
and running their own exploration show, right? But everything we've seen so far and everything that the show seems to hint at is that um, Starfleet is very inspired by the Navy and by the military in general, right? So I don't understand why they didn't. Like, they even talk about how You know, Trip ran through a series of exercises with Archer on Titan in this episode. Like, they've clearly been drilled. They understand what they're supposed to be doing. And, and like, when T'Pol was, you know, recommending that they at least survey the planet before they sat down on it. Like, I don't understand how that's just not basic operating procedure. Yeah, man, but they're they're out of the house now, bro. They're free and clear. All they got is that lousy babysitter to Paul. Just keep it an eye on them. They can do what you're, they want, man. And, 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 you know, it's funny because I think, like, as, 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 as sarcastic as you're being there, I think, I think some of it is that there's this level of, like, this, I don't know if it's, it's just, like, lip service or, or just straight up, like, bowing to the idea that, like, well, out on the frontier, the captain is the only one who matters. Like, it doesn't matter what those stuffy rule books say. The captain is the one who has to make all the decisions, and it's it's his way, and that's it. You know, the idea that the captain is the king of the ship. I have the captain now. <laughs> A line like, I only I guess know that's from it. memes. <laughs> like we're we're four episodes deep at this point and Archer's just shown that he only makes bad decisions. Like I, I don't understand why somebody on the crew doesn't speak up. Aside from T'Pol. You know, and that's what happens to T'Pol. Right. And that's fine. And like Maybe. T'Pol is being used as that kind of foil, but we're never given a sense that anyone else on the crew even disagrees. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying about like the bridge scene earlier. Everybody is clearly on Archer's side <laughs> on this decision. Right. It it just feels like there's this super strong bully versus nerd culture war going on at the show right now. It's bizarre. That's interesting too because this is the one show that doesn't have a strong like science theming to it at least yet. I don't think it ever really gets there. How do you mean exactly? So, um, I, I guess to Paul, to Paul's kind of an advisor. Is she actually like a science officer? Is that her title? She is sub commander, sub commander. Yeah. So she's, she's basically like the XO. Well, yeah. no, but not, but second like she's, in command. she's the I second guess. in command, but, but from the Vulcans, but think about like, like, you know, Mr. Spock was a science officer and in next generation, we spend a lot of time looking at like diagrams and st- like you know made up pseudoscience data and sure. stuff and um uh you know voyager had the whole astro astro metrics lab thing going on and yeah and, the and inter- it's just like i was yeah. gonna say like no no, no you should but <laughs> um I, I just think like it's it's interesting that rob you say it's kind of it feels like a, a a jocks versus nerds kind of atmosphere and it's it's funny you say that because now that i think about it having having heard that like this is the one star trek i can think of off the top of my head that does not have a strong science culture to it you, it you is kind of right yeah it's far more that like cavalier american nonsense they're just they're riding their space Harley into the deep space area to just check out some shit. Mm-hmm. Screw that science bullshit. Yeah. We're seeing it, stuff. It just feels like the writers kind of missed the cue on what Star Trek is. Yeah. And I wonder if some of it is like they think that Flox is fulfilling that role, but he's not. Like, he's just not doing that. I think it's more that he's like, he's not even allowed to. Because like, like you were saying earlier, when... When he tries to explain what's happening to Archer, Archer just throws a hissy fit. And like we've seen we've seen that like captain medical officer dynamic play out in a better way where like there's still like some friendly antagonism with like Kirk and Bones. But this is not that. Right. Right. It just feels feels weird. Mm-hmm. Um so like protocols, right? They, they clearly have something in place for first contact at this point. Um, I guess, like, there is a Starfleet regulation and rule book in place before they leave, right? 
or yeah, American United Earth or whatever their government body is. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly definitely multiple lines that allude to there being, you know, guidelines, thoughts, so rules. So Archer just chooses not to observe them at all. Yeah, man, that's what Star Trek captains do. Which is which is fair. That is a fair statement. The only the, the person who stuck by the rules the hardest was Janeway. I that's interesting. I don't know if I agree with that or not. I oh snaps. Hmm. I feel like it. I would I would vote for Cisco. Oh my gosh! Oh God, no! Absolutely not! The motherfucker yeah. let a religious no. movement take over his station more than once. Yeah, and acted as their <laughs> Jesus. So you know, pretty sure that's not on the on the list of things. And now, to no. be fair to no, him, it did work. <laughs> that's like the argument that every Star Trek captain makes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, okay, sure, I violated every rule in the book, but at the end of the day, it worked. But yeah, I, I, while I agree that I think that was a theme in Voyager more than any other Star Trek. Like battling with the 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 morals versus the the regulations. I I don't know. I mean, she does have to break them a lot. Well, they all do, right? But like, what, so who's your contender? I assume it's Picard. I don't. Probably, I don't. Probably. Yeah. Because I, mean, I mean, he, he does break them too. He so. does break a lot of rules. He's just a- very. As I said first, that's what Star Trek captains do. Right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Like, if there wasn't that point of contention, it would make everything a lot more boring. Yeah. I don't know. It it just goes back to that whole Archer just seems to... Um, he, he just... He puts his crew in a lot of unnecessary danger. I, 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 I guess I think, I think the best way to put it is that, like, Archer seems to... There's a there's a certain sense from the other Star Trek captains that I can you know kind of bring to my head that when you need to make like reasoned arguments, it's not even so much about the rule book per se, but there is a lot of mm-hmm. arguments that um, pay heed to like the ethical foundations of Starfleet as an organization or the morality of Starfleet or, right. you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas Archer doesn't do that. He also, he, he, he talks about the human spirit a lot, which is not the same thing. Um, you say the, the faith of the human heart. Exactly. And then and, and that's kind of my point. Like he, he's, Less about the morality and more about the, like, gung-ho-ness of humanity as an exploration. And it's it's a choice. Like, that is a capital C choice to make in the writing of this show that I find yeah. interesting. I think, I think they were trying to make it feel more exploratory and ended up leaning on that, like, you know, explore dialogue filter button way too hard. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you know, explorers in Western culture, they did some bad shit. Right, but the problem is they're not going to talk about that part of this, right? They're just going to talk about our 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 human spirit and our just our, our unquenchable yearn to go out and do things in the quote unquote unknown. And it's it's funny because we are couched like this show is couched in a lot of that same kind of problematic historical language that we've been using. You know, these like, oh, we're going to go to these unexplored parts of space. No, 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 no. Those parts of space have been explored. They are being lived in by people who are native to there. We just haven't been there yet. But that's that's still that black and white language of like we're the explorers mm. and exploring space is what we do. It is the same historical nonsense that we've yeah you know, we've been living with as you know part of this this European culture that that we've had for hundreds of years. I will say I was surprised at the restraint he showed to at least look for a beacon or some sort of identifier that like. Someone had been there before them. <laughs> that that reminds me of an old joke. Um, Scan the planet for flags. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the old joke of like of like did the, the British show up in India and put their flag down and the Indians are like, yeah. What the fuck? This isn't your land and the British are like, Yeah, it is. We have a flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flag's here. Where's your flag? Yeah. Nowhere. <laughs> Like, I, I appreciate that there is absolutely no concept in Archer's mind as to ownership unless it, A, has actual people that they see on it, or B, someone has broadcasted in a language that he can understand, I mean that metaphorically, that that it is owned. Otherwise, it's fair mm-hmm. game. And, and as... It, it's a level of hubris that, like, is unsurprising. But humanity is not old to the stars. We're brand new at this. Everyone we've met yeah. has been doing this longer than us. And he's going to act like, here's a planet that clearly no one's ever been on, ever, because it doesn't have a flag. Yeah, it just feels like the bad kind of nationalism. Right. But, like, substitute humans as a whole. Right. And so I think that that ethos kind of kind of manifests in this idea that like and again, it, it kind of combines with the the fact that like a captain at sea is the king of this domain. Right. Like mm-hmm. we don't hear about the rules and regulations because the show He's just making them up. Right. Like there's just no heedens paid toward like an overarching organization. And the only time they ever really talk about it is when they complain about to Paul. Paul, making us look stupid and stuff. Ugh, mm. Jerk. All right. Well, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be back for our last segment. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, to take us away with section three, will be Stanford this week. Yes, so to, uh, this week I'm calling this section, um, uh, uh, I'm calling it, um, really? That's that's the name of this section. Um, so I thought we'd do something a little fun today. I went out and found a which Star Trek captain are you quiz. So I'm going to, I'm going to oh, administer no. that to the two of you. Excellent. Now, Excellent. I have already taken this quiz, but I'm going to hold back my results until the end. Okay? All right, so. We're going to go, we're going to go in order. Like we'll go Rob, since you're our host, we'll start with you. And then Chris answers the same question. Okay. So these are multiple choice. Here we go. What is your dream car? Is it a red Ford Mustang, a BMW sedan, a Tesla, a trusty pickup truck, or an awesome minivan? I don't like any of those. Oh, it's the douchey answer, but I'm going to say Tesla. Oh no, Chris. Gotta say something. There's no none of the above. Um, of those choices, uh, a pickup truck, I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which is your favorite meal? And like of this list, okay. Steak and potatoes, grilled cheese with tomato soup, roast chicken with root vegetables, cheeseburger and fries, or just a good old jambalaya. Oh, grilled cheese and tomato soup, 100%, all the way forever. Wow, I was expecting roast chicken out of you, you vanilla motherfucker. No. No, man, I'm a comfort food kind of guy. Mm. Chris? Um, mm, I like all of those things, but I, if I have to pick one, I will say... Jump away. All righty. Get some, get some culture in here. All right, uh, what did you study in college? Now, if you did not go to college... Chris, or if you do, or at I least went to college, I, I guess like oh, that's rude, true. It's two, rude. <laughs> two, and this will apply, I think, to both of you, if I remember correctly. If your major is not on here, pick the one that you would do if you didn't, if you had to do one of these. Okay, what okay. did you study in college? Uh, theater, physics, political science, anthropology, or kinesiology? Because um, you're you're both computer people, right? In college, yeah, yeah. Yeah, information, information science, sciences. Techniques. Weird, yep. uh, weird that poli sci was on here. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, I would say of those options, I would pick physics. Okay. 
So I'm going to need you to repeat those options because I was just so outraged from your elitist right. motherfucker. I know. It's, it's a lot of hard educational academia words, so I'll try to break it down for you. Okay, so theater, physics, political science, anthropology, or kinesiology. First off, you are a dick. I know. Uh, but anthropology. Okay. All right. Which accessory do you prefer? Sunglasses, a nice barrette, fun socks, a <laughs> wristwatch, or a baseball cap? Barrette, really? What? I, what you sunglasses. can wear a barrette? I pick sunglasses. Okay. Eh, sunglasses, yeah. All right. Which Star Trek series did you enjoy the most out of this set? Original series, oh Voyager, Next Generation, Enterprise, or Deep Space Nine? I think this was before any of the newer ones came out. Ooh. Next gen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with next gen. Okay. How do you prefer to travel? Or how would you prefer to travel if all of these were available to you? By transporter, by spaceship, by boat, by escape pod, or by walking? I mean, it kind of depends on where I'm going, but... No, no. Like... Which, how do you prefer? Like, which of these is your favorite? But... But, like, a boat can only get you certain places. <laughs> I mean, you got to go with spaceship, right? Yeah, uh, sure, spaceship. Just because I would pick transporter, but I don't know if it's actually me on the other end or not. Mm, yeah, like, it depends. Good point. It depends, like, if if I'm going somewhere for a purpose, like work. Oh, my God. I just oh want to oh be my there. God. I would pick the All transport. five of the options are available right now to get you from point A to point B, regardless of what they are. Which one do you want? And they all get you there okay. in the same amount of time. Why does this transporter take so long? Because there's a line. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Spaceship. I'm sticking with spaceship. Final answer. <laughs> What would you do if your officer was injured on the spacecraft and was technically brain dead? Would you accept their fate and let them go? Acquire alien technology to make them better. Download their consciousness into a mainframe and acquire a new body. Grow them a new brain in a clone. Or send, the, send their family the news and ask for their request. This is a weird one. Mm. Yeah, shit got, shit got dark real fast. Um... Oh, I have an answer. I, I would. Rub. I, I would contact the family and find out what they wanted. Okay. Since they're my officer, I think that implies that I'm the captain, which means that it's my responsibility to make them better. So I would say acquire alien technology to make them better. Okay. How frequently do you travel? Frequently due to work, a vacation once a year. Uh, you travel a few times a year. You've been waiting for a long trip to Europe, but haven't gotten out much otherwise, or you travel every few years? I'd say a few times a year. Same. Uh, which social media outlet is your favorite? I'm not sure what kind of advertising um, uh, bugs this one <laughs> gives, but the options are Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, or Facebook. Uh, Captain's, Log, Captain's Log Supplemental is not supported by any of these platforms. <laughs> um, I would of those I would pick Twitter yeah uh, probably probably Twitter just because it's the easiest as far as I know to kind of uh, shape what I'm seeing yeah okay it's easier to self curate yeah. sure do you have a favorite star and by star I mean like celestial body not a celebrity um, mm -hmm. your answers are I have a least favorite star I have a star that is a friend I try not to discriminate between the stars, Sirius or the sun. Vega's not an option. No. Nope. Alpha Centauri. Come on. Uh, I would pick Sirius then. The sun. Cause you know, I mean, it's close. Which non Star Trek spaceship would you like to pilot? And I did have to look one of these up cause I did not recognize it. So I'm curious what everyone does. Okay. Millennium Falcon X 301 TARDIS serenity or an x-wing what's the x301 rob do you know no that is the guauld fighters from stargate sg1 that is, <laughs> that is a very random pull yeah that is it's weird i had to look it up that's the one i did not know 
it's weird that they have multiple Star Wars. Right. Um, but I mean, you gotta go with the Millennium Falcon here. How can you not? Oh, well, I did not. Did you pick I'm, TARDIS? I've no, never been I, a Doctor Who guy, so TARDIS. Uh, no, is God. <laughs> ew, fuck that shit. No, I picked Serenity because in my brain I would like to live on my ship and it seemed more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Because it's fair. bigger. Uh, which beverage do you find most refreshing? Apple cider, red wine, tea, Earl Grey, hot, whiskey, or soda pop? Soda pop? <laughs> refreshing. I mean, refreshing? Yep, refreshing. that's... I think um, what they mean pop. is, which one would you go for? I, I know, because whiskey's yeah. not a refreshing drink, but... No. I, I, yeah, soda pop. I like, like, mostly all of these, like, in different situations. It's mm-hmm. right. So, yeah, it's just, it's an afternoon. You've got a few minutes to yourself. What do you reach for? Uh, probably a nice cup of tea. All righty. I love Earl Grey tea, by the way. It's delicious. So aromatic. Where would, yes. Where would you most like to vacation right now? Miami, Ohio, Tahiti, Washington, D.C., or New Orleans? Who the fuck is going to pick Ohio? Ooh. No one from Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, Probably Tahiti. I've never been there. It's, sounds fun. I, I think I would pick DC only because I just moved out of that area and I would like to see all you guys again. Oh, oh, well, not you, Chris. You're in Missouri. Fuck you. <laughs> dox me, bro. Don't dox me. <laughs> you know, yes, they just have only... to search the entire state of Missouri. Yeah, there are only like three I'm people. Danger. I just I just bumped the shit out of my mic, too. There's only like three <laughs> people that live in Missouri, and only one of them is named Chris. So, yeah, that's true. I'm found out. My life is over. OK, um, can I what is, what is happening? OK, that's better. Um, OK, which pet would you most like to have for companionship? A golden retriever, a Persian cat, a gray parrot, a beagle puppy or a miniature pig? Oh, man, the mini pig is super tempting, but golden retriever. Uh, mini pig, man. <laughs> Pigs are very smart. They are. Golden retrievers are not. <laughs> I mean, they're what? smart. They're just doofy. Which U.S. agency or branch would you most want to work for from this list? ATF, E, NASA, the Judicial Branch, the Department of Energy, or Homeland Security? NASA. Uh, NASA? <laughs> like, who, who's not going to pick that? All right. Which department store is your favorite? And this list may indicate how old this list is. Seriously. Sears? Macy's, Nordstrom, J.C. Penney's, or one called Beals that I've never heard of? Nope, neither have I. Uh, is there a Woolsworth on there? I cannot remember the last time I walked into a department store. But it was probably J.C. Penney's, so we'll go with that, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, like, if I was going to any of them, it would probably be J.C. Penney's. Where do you keep your notes and reminders? A notepad on my phone, a small spiral bound notebook, a locking notebook, voice memos on my audio recorder or phone, uh, post-it notes. Can, can I pencil in one note? That's going to be a notepad on your phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that one too. What is your favorite relaxing evening activity? Playing video games, playing cards with friends, stargazing, going for a walk, or watching the sports ball game of the season? Uh, video games. <laughs> Seeing as that is our, our normal weekly activity, I think we all know the answer is playing video games. Mm, I, yeah. picked, uh, I picked cards with friends because it involved friends. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a better person than both of you. So, uh, what's your favorite kind of outfit? Outfit. My Up work in, what yeah, about my the input? Would, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you done? Are you done? <laughs> What's your favorite kind of outfit? My work uniform is my favorite. Business formal, formal wear is my favorite. Jeans and a t-shirt or business casual? Who the fuck is answering my work outfit is my favorite? Um, what if your work outfit is what your if jeans you, and t-shirt? What if you're an astronaut, Chris? So what would be you know, what would be the workout outfit of, of an astronaut? Would it be the spacesuit or just like the shit you wear while you're training? 
All of it. <laughs> it's all awesome. I uh, will say I do miss wearing scrubs. Um, see, like that would be see. And when you say that, that is that is a work uniform. Like I would I would say that if that's your favorite outfit, that's under work uniform. It wasn't I'll, I'll go there. with jeans and a T-shirt. Yeah, je- say, jeans and a T-shirt. My favorite actual outfit is like basketball shorts and a T-shirt because uh, that's hella more comfortable than jeans. Oh, but. yeah, that's in here under business casual. <laughs> I mean, it is. That's what I wear at work. But uh, yeah, we'll go jeans and a T-shirt. It's closest. Okay. Which snack do you like the most while traveling out of this list? Beef jerky, mustard pretzels, sugar snap peas, popcorn, or potato chips? Mustard pretzels. What was the first one? Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Yeah, pretzels. We're not allowed to all be the same person, by the way. But you already know we are. What is your greatest fear? The unknown? Clowns? Making the wrong decision? Flying in an airplane? Or losing your family? Losing the family. Flying in an airplane? Wow. Okay. Rob's like, fuck the fam. I hope my family I hate heights, man. Uh, what what is the best part about being on a Star Trek spaceship? The transporters are awesome. I quite enjoy the holodeck. Helping free oppressed groups is wonderful. Exploring the unknown is amazing. Or developing a great rapport with the crew is the best thing. Oh, man, you know, it's gonna be one of the last two, but I think I'm gonna go with exploring the unknown. Exploring is pretty cool, but I think in any job I do, my favorite part is 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 building rapport with everybody there. So I'll go with that one. I have to say, out of all of the questions, that one probably had the most best answers. Like, those were all quality yeah. answers to that. Which region of the United States do you enjoy the most? Not which one are you currently living in? Yeah. Um, the Plains region, the Great Lakes region, the West, <clears throat> New England, or the Deep South? What happened in Mid-Atlantic? Yeah, the Mid-Atlantic is probably, like, they're talking about New England at that point. Like, Pennsylvania is part of New England, as far as this test is concerned. It's a very wide range of geographic area. Yeah, Yeah. well, the Rockies aren't on here at all. Is that just the West? Because, like... Yeah. Um, You know what? Because because I'm starting a new chapter in my life, I'm going to go with the West. And we're just going to say the Rockies fall in there. I agree with that assessment. Yeah, I'll say the West. Pretty sweet, sweet scenery out there. Which internet browser do you use? Just answer it. Uh, Firefox. Firefox. Oh, man, I feel like such a loser now. What, do you use Chrome? Yes, I do. I use Chrome at work. Except when I have to use Edge. We have to use Edge at work. Oh, God, I don't like it when Microsoft edges me. What is your favorite exercise activity? Running, swimming, Tai Chi, tennis, or baseball? Oh, baseball. Yeah, baseball. Not that I get to play it that much, but it is fun. No. What would you do if your ship were stranded across time and space? I'd start a new life after realizing that returning is futile. I'd cause a rift in time and space to get my alternate timeline self to help my crew return. It's kind of a fighting fire with fire situation. I'd rely on our allies in space to help us return. I'd talk to every ship I could find um, to find the technology to send us back. Or honestly, I'm not sure my shipmates and I would even notice. Wow. Um, What were options one and four again? Jesus, one in four? Um, (laughs) Yeah. I'd start a new life after realizing that returning is futile, or I'd talk to every ship I could to find the technology to send us back. Yeah, I'd probably do that last one. Yeah, same. Honestly, I'm not sure my shipmates would even notice. No, the the, the last one you said before. Yeah, option four. How do you get around large cities? Driving, taxis, Uber... Bus system, subway system. I mean, the best way is subway. That's not the question. How do you do it? To be honest, I don't spend a whole lot of time in large cities, but when I have, it's... At least recently, it's been Uber. I would I would always opt for subway if there's a subway. So okay. I'm pick subway. Which military service would you prefer to join out of the ones available? I am... 
a little butt hurt about this list, but we will continue. Army, <laughs> Navy, oh, I I. Space Force, Air Force, <laughs> Coast Guard. Well, the Space Force isn't real. So. Well, it is real. <laughs> I mean... Steve Carell's well, in it. Only in the sense that it exists. <laughs> it does exist. I mean, in terms of mission, absolutely Space Force. Uh, in terms of reality, I would probably go Army. I'd go Navy. I'd go Marine Corps. Uh. <laughs> How would your closest, how would your friends, oh, so this is one you have to answer for each other. Chris, how do you describe Rob's outward personality? Outgoing, competent, brooding, proud, or tense? Competent. And Rob, same question to you about Chris. Outgoing. Was that outgoing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And finally, which book would you bring with you on the ship? 1984, Jane Eyre, Othello, Jane Eyre? It might yeah. be pronounced Jane Eyre. Othello, Frankenstein, I assume the original by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, or To Kill a Mockingbird? Frankenstein. Is this like ninth grade English? Why did they come up with this? Yeah, out of all of them, Frankenstein. Ooh, so you are both very similar people. And so you have actually managed to get the same captain. Do you have any guesses? I just hope it's not Archer. <laughs> Rob, you got a guess? Um, so it doesn't include any of the new shows. I'm going to guess Cisco. Okay. Do you want to hear what mine was or do you want to hear what y'all's were first? What was yours? Mine yeah, was yours Janeway. Due to your analytical personality, because I guess that's what it determined, you are most like Catherine Janeway. Captain Catherine Janeway had the mind of a scientist. She was always looking at every possibility and, skeptic and skeptical of every situation. The English here is not super great. She was also very brave and extraordinarily ethical, always worrying about the consequences of her actions. These attributes, attributes made her a great captain through very trying times, and these similarities in personality will serve me well in life. You know what? I changed my mind. I think we're Kirk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. I think so. No, y'all yeah. both got fucking Jonathan Archer. Oh, God, damn. God damn it. Due to your drive to succeed, you are most like Captain Ugh. Archer. The first captain of Starfleet, Captain Archer. Jonathan Archer was the first human to explore outer space. Wait. <laughs> as well as the first to make contact with many alien species. He was driven his whole life to explore space, and when he was finally able to do so, he let nothing stop him. Determined to prove that humans had a place in space, Archer always completed his missions, took care of his crew. Like Captain Archer, don't give up on your goals. And most importantly, have faith of the heart. <laughs> faith of the heart all right so that'll wrap us for this week uh next week we will do episode five of enterprise um i assume we're doing round robin so i think chris is going to be in charge of that one um i think my plan is to once we have a few of these in the can is to get the socials and shit set up and i will will record like a like a canned boilerplate socials thing for the yep. end of this so you'll hear about those in a second. Uh, all right. Well, good night, everybody. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Captain's Log Supplemental. You can follow us on Twitter at PodCLS or send us hate mail at PodCLS3 at gmail.com.